Hi students, welcome back to Chakravarti E Classroom. Today we are going to discuss two questions from Time and Distance chapter. Actually these two questions are taken from one of our doubt clarification sessions only. Generally we have doubt clarification sessions for our paid students who have purchased our course. I have taken these two questions and explaining again on YouTube so that other students may also be benefited. And these two questions are already been posted in our telegram channels also and uh, I think most of the students must have completed this one. And the difficulty level as far as difficulty level is concerned I can categorize these questions as simply moderate difficulty level only not beyond that one. Because if you know the concept of time and distance in a proper way you can easily do these questions within seconds. By the way students if you know the concept of time and distance complete concept of that one and if you know how to apply that one these questions should not take uh, the first question must not take more than 30 seconds okay this is directly from time and distance concept second is based on trains trains if you know the concept of trains this also should not be taking more than 30 seconds Right. So, this timing is only for those students who have been practicing these questions, not for the beginners. Remember this one. Okay. Right. Let us solve the question students here. The first question you take. Ah, what you need to do before that one students, you just pause the screen here and you try to do these two questions by yourself. After that resume the video so that you can learn some new points. Right. Now, what is the first question? Two cars started from Hyderabad and Bangalore towards each other at the same time. Very important one started at the same time. Uh, they have given the speeds also 70 and 90 kilometers per hour respectively. When they met each other on the way, it was observed that uh, one car traveled 70 kilometers more than that of the other. Then find the distance between Hyderabad and uh, Bangalore. You can do this question very very easily if you know the concept I told you. See students what I do. Anyway in our regular course I explain this concept in a very very a uh, clear way, crystal clarity way. Okay, right. For the students who are watching this video now, I will explain the concept which is related to this question. Only two things we are going to discuss so that you can do this question without writing anything on the paper. Just recollect the concept students, time, speed and distance. What is the relationship among these three? Quickly, alright. You try to recollect that one and focus on what you are going to say now. All of you know the relation between speed and time. Everybody knows from the childhood we have been reading that one, studying that one. The relation between speed and time. What is that relation? Inversely proportional. What do you mean by that one? By, by, while writing I will explain you. Speed is inversely proportional to time. Speed is proportional to 1 by time. What is the meaning of that one? In general terms, the more is the speed, correspondingly the less is the time. Isn't it? When distance is constant or distance is same. That means in simple words to cover a certain distance if you go with the more speed correspondingly you will take less time. In the other way if you go with less speed you will take correspondingly more time. This is called inversely proportional to each other. Many of us know this one but the second one the relationship between uh, uh, speed and the distance. If you know that one properly, this question is a cake swap for you. It is a peanut. Without writing anything on the paper, you can do. The relationship between speed and the distance. You tell me students, what is the relationship between speed and distance? Clearly, speed is directly proportional to distance. When time is constant. What do you mean by that one? Suppose, in a certain time, if you go with the more speed, you can cover more distance, isn't it? Directly proportional to each other. Alright, some noise is there, some construction is going on. Please bear with that one. Okay, right. Next, the more speed you go, correspondingly, the more distance you cover. Isn't it? When time is a constant. Got the idea? Now, I am going to take this one to the next level. So that we can use that one as a shortcut while solving this type of questions. What is that one? See students, if in the question, if they have given the speed ratio, speed ratio, you can equalize that speed ratio to distance ratio. Okay, you just make a note of this one. When time is constant, 
speed ratio is equal to distance ratio when time is constant. I am going to use this technique now. Right? Now, go back to the question. Please make a note of this. I am going to use this technique. What is that? Uh, see the speeds here. They have given speeds here. Both started at the same time and both met at the same time. That means the time is constant here. Time is same for both of them. Isn't it? In this case, you can use this technique. Now, the speed ratio you take, uh, I am taking as two buses, bus 1, speed of bus 1 is to speed of bus 2 you take. This is given in the question. What is that one? So, what is that one? What is the various? Ah, 70 and uh, 90. 70 and 90 is nothing but uh, 7 is to 9. Isn't it? The speed ratio is 70 is to 9. Then time is constant. Now, I can take the speed ratio as a distance ratio also. Distance covered by bus 1 is to distance covered by bus 2 is 7 is to 9. Understood the logic? Right? If you know the concept, you can take this one in your mind. To explain you, it is taking this much time. Speed ratio is 7 is to 9. That can be taken as a distance ratio also because the time is same. Time is constant. The very meaning of this one is, if first bus travels 7 kilometers, correspondingly, in the same time, second bus travels 9 kilometers. This is the distance ratio, right? Now, it was observed that when they met, one bus traveled 70 kilometers more than the other, isn't it? Let us imagine in this way. I started with the imaginary numbers. Suppose one bus travelled only for 7 kilometers and the other bus travelled for 9 kilometers. When they meet each other, when they meet each other, what is the difference between the distance travelled by them according to these figures? That is 9 by 7, 9 minus 7, that is 2. With my imaginary numbers, difference is 2. In the actual problem they have given, difference is 70 with the same ratio. Now, I can use the unitary method. What is that one? What question they have asked finally? Find the distance between Hyderabad and Bangalore. Hyderabad is here. Bangalore is here. This is bus 1 and bus 2. They met uh, somewhere here. That means distance travelled by both the buses is equal to the distance between two cities, Hyderabad and Bangalore. Isn't it? Now, with the imaginary numbers, with the imaginary numbers, when the difference is 2, they have travelled for 9 plus 7, 16 kilometers. When the difference is 2, they have travelled for 16 kilometers. Now, unitary method, when the difference is 2, they travelled for 16 kilometers. Or the total distance equal to 16 kilometers. Now, the actual difference is 70. When the difference is 70, they have travelled for how many kilometers in total? So, unitary method, this is simply 70 by 2 into 16 or this is 2, 8 is 16. Now, here my answer is 560 kilometers. This is the way. How simple this one, students? If you do not know the concept, the relationship between distance and speed, it is very difficult to solve the question within 20 to 30 seconds. On the other side, if you know this technique, you can do without writing anything on the paper. Generally, in my course, most of the cases, I give this type of techniques. But all the techniques must be given only after learning the concept. Okay, clear this one, right? Or here, you can use one more shortcut also. What is that one? 2 is equal to 16, 1 is equal to 80. Then 1 is equal to 8, sorry. Then 8 into 70 is my answer. Or else, 2 is equal to 70, then 16 is equal to what? In what way you want, you can do that one. That's the beauty of unitary method. Is it clear for all of you? Yes or no? Right. This is the way. Now, my answer is 560 kilometers without writing anything on the paper. You must do it. Okay. Now, go for the second question. Take the second question now. Uh, where is that? Ah, here. Now, we see students how they have given two trains. Yes. Keep it here, adjust. Ah, right. What is that? Two trains of the same length. Very, very important point again. Same length. Length is the same. 
can cross a pole in 9 and 11 seconds respectively how much time would it take for both the trains to cross each other if they are traveling in the opposite direction to each other on parallel tracks fantastic question students actually if you do not know the concept of trains it's very very difficult to understand this one first concept should be there and you have to apply that concept to develop some shortcuts here the key key for us is they are of same length this is the given one but before going for this one students i cannot teach all the basics in in a like in 5 or 10 minutes trains basics uh, uh, in our course it took almost 2 to 3 hours to understand the complete basics of this one in a nutshell i'll give you uh, two points i'll give you only two points always remember all of you know this one but i'm just repeating it suppose one pole is here to cross this pole for a train always remember to cross this pole the train has to cover or travel its own length you know this one all right suppose 200 meters length train is there to cross the pole it has to cover the distance which is equal to its own length that is one thing and second one suppose two trains are coming towards each other on parallel tracks okay in this case to cross each other to cross each other these two trains must travel a distance which is equal to the length of both the trains isn't it this train is coming here what do you mean by that one to cross that one right oh, this is called completely crossed each other to travel that one it has to cover this distance both the trains have to travel their own length this is the point you have to learn this all right now based on this I'm going to solve this question. Simple one students, what they have given. I told you one technique. What was that? First directly go to the question part. Okay. Just divide the problem into two parts, information and a question. Go directly to the question part, make it as a habit. What is the question part here, 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 here? What is that? How much time? Actually in the question they have given, how much time in brackets they have given in seconds. In second, generally that is when both the trains are crossing each other, the time is calculated in seconds only, not in minutes. Okay. Anyway, one second that is there. How much time in seconds would it take for both the trains to cross uh, each other when they are traveling towards each other is the question. So they are asking, listen carefully from here, focus, focus, focus so that you can do it very easily. They are asking for the time, isn't it? What do you mean by time students? You know the formula time is equal to distance by speed yes or no i just write this one here so that uh, we can directly apply our time is equal to distance by speed see students here in this scenario when both the trains are crossing each other on parallel tracks the distance is equal to what is the distance you tell me just now we discussed uh, length of the first train plus length of the second train isn't it? Actually, this should come to your mind. Just for your sake, I am writing on the board. Okay, I need to find out the time. Time is distance by speed. Distance is equal to length of train 1 plus length of train 2. Right? Divided by speed, speed. In this case, speed is taken as a relative speed. Why relative speed? And that to relative speed towards each other. Why that is so? Because when both the objects are moving, the speed will become relative. When both the objects are moving opposite to each other, the speeds will be added, obviously. When both the objects are moving one after the other or in the same direction, relative speed will become minus. Minus in the sense, speed of like the more speed you have to take first, more speed minus less speed as far as the vehicles are concerned. Okay, now in this case, this is relative speed. Relative speed, both are coming towards each other. Then speed of train 1 plus speed of train 2. Alright, always remember students, focus on this one. Go to the question part first. For the beginners, I am telling you. Now, this is what exactly I need to find out. Okay, I need to know the length of the train divided by speed of the train. For length of the train, they have given a clue. Except this clue, nothing is given about that one. How both the trains are of the same length, then they can cross the pole in 9 and 11 seconds respectively. That's it. Nothing more than that one. We can use this. We can use this. 
don't take anything as x or y don't go for this one we'll solve this question with lcm method like how we solve the questions in time and work chapter how this one students since length is the same the first case in the first case the first train takes how many seconds 9 seconds to cross a pole second one takes 11 seconds to cross a pole now we will take the length of the train as lcm of these two instead of taking x or y why lcm of these two to avoid the fractions what's the lcm of 9 and 11 that is 99 i am imagining that the length of one train is 99 meters obviously the length of the second train is also 99 meters okay now my task is to find out the speed because length is already there 99 plus 99 how to find out speed in the first case you see students either first or second speed is equal to distance by time okay now in the first case distance by time in the first case when one train is crossing a pole just now we have discussed it has to travel its own length distance which is equal to its own length in the first case in the first case distance is 99 it has to travel 99 meters to cross a pole what's the time taken by the first one 9 seconds so this is 99 meters and 9 seconds obviously this is 11 what we are finding out here we are finding out the speed 11 meters per second the speed of the first train yes i got this one similarly the second train second train also must cover 99 meters because it is of the same length this is 99 divided by distance by time time taken for that one is 11 seconds the speed of the second one is 9 meters per second okay now speed of the first one is 11 meters per second second one is 9 meters per second just substitute the values here you need not write this one on the paper in the mind only you have to do now the length is length is both are coming towards each other on parallel tracks the length is 99 into 2 this is the distance they have to travel to cross each other next divided by speed speed is 11 plus 9 that is 20 meters per second observe this one students it is meters per second and it is meters meters per second and meters time we will get the time in seconds they also asked in the question as seconds only now clearly just simplify this one this is 2 10 times and 9.9 seconds is the right answer okay to explain this one it took this much time students right just think it carefully if you know the concept easily you can do that one after reading the question only this should come to your mind i need to find out the time time is equal to distance by speed since both are coming towards each other distance will become this one both of uh, length of both the trains speed will become relative speed positive way plus clearly i need to find out length and uh, this one uh, what do you call this one speed length with this clue i can say that one instead of taking x or y i am taking the lcm simply that is like uh, when lcm is 99 automatically i can go like this 9 plus 11 that is meters per second is the speed finally i'll get the answer as 9.9 seconds isn't it simple students always do the questions in this way whatever the chapter may be maybe profit and loss percentages mixture and allegation time and work time and distance for many questions many techniques are there but a uh, one uh, message i'll give you or one thing i'll tell you be very cautious about the concept first of all your concept should be clear only then you will get the confidence to practice the questions thank you very much and i'll i'll meet you in the next session with some other questions thank you so much